What's up, sins and commandments alike? This is Griever, your guys' host as always, bringing you guys the second episode of Season 3, the official Season 3, of Nanatsu no Taizai, Wrath of the Gods. Now, also called Seven Deadly Sins. Now, second time recording, guys, so unfortunately, maybe I won't be, uh, you know, as, as hyped for this, because I literally was two minutes away from finished recording, and OBS crashed on me. So, what are you going to do? I was trying to get this review out in a timely fashion, apparently I'm not, because I watched the episode late, you know, I've had a long day at work, and um, I was trying to get this, I wasn't even considering doing the review today, I was going to wait a day, now I'm going to do it, and of course, there goes 20 minutes of recording. So... Forgive me if I'm not as passionate about this particular review, but don't worry, I always try to bring that hype to you guys. Now, so right off the bat, just want to talk about something that was a big complaint in the last episode that seems to have been avoided in this episode, but the problem is still persists. Censorship. There is still censorship in this episode. Now I just don't understand why. They don't seem... Here's what they seem to be censoring, ladies and gentlemen. They seem to be censoring... Flowing blood, animated wounds and blood, because they show still images, which once again, there's a lot of stills it feels like in these damn episodes, um, but they are showing a lot of stills uh, of blood, and, and actually pretty gruesome blood, but suffice it to say, eh, you know, it, it's still not great, there is still some stuff where it still looks like this pasted over white, you know, I mean, let's call a spade a spade. It looks like somebody had a little too much fun, you know, um, b below the waistline uh, on, on these people and stuff. And it's just kind of weird. But that being said, uh, this episode didn't really have a whole lot of it. Like, there was only like one, two scenes. So it, it didn't feel as like in your face, we have censored this. Apparently, it is going to be fixed for the Netflix and Blu-ray releases. That's what I've been informed. I don't know if that's true. That's just what has been said. Apparently, TV Tokyo and everyone knows about these complaints and have been informed. Maybe it will be fixed. Maybe it won't. Who the hell knows? That being said, um, let's jump into the episode. So, this episode starts, if I, starts us off at the end of the last one. And this could be considered the actual true first episode of Season 3. As I said, most of... The first episode was filler, and now we're having a true to the manga. It didn't seem to be very much filler at all. Little 10-second sequences here and there. No, not really any filler in this episode. So that was pretty cool, right? Because this is a good arc. I enjoyed the starting and the majority of this part of the arc. So that being said, so King and Deanne still in the bath, blah, blah, blah. They have some puns back and forth, whatever. Um, once again, guys, I'm not a huge fan of Deanne. Remember, uh, if you guys watch my manga reviews, I'm not a huge fan of Deanne at all. I find her irritating and annoying. And uh, King, I'm a hit and miss with. But when King is paired with Deanne, that is like his worst moments. Like King is, is fine in almost every other scene and every other moment except for scenes with Deanne, in my opinion. I like None of this episode did King like impress me or was I really happy with. Um... So that, that's another thing. Like, his badass moments never happen with Deanne. Like, like almost ever. So, uh, or if they do, there's multiple other characters involved. Like, like the Helbrum thing in Season 1. Like, that was between King and Helbrum. Yes, Deanne was there, but it wasn't King and Deanne. It was uh, King and Helbrum. It's different. So, anyways, uh, but we're not here to do a character discussion thing, but just to let you guys know. So, um... So we, st we get, after that little part, we see that King, you know, makes a joke, uh, or he thinks Deanne's talking about his, you know, below the waistline stuff. He's, she's not, but, you know, hilarity will ensue. Opening, still, meh, don't like the song, don't think it flows, whatever. Move on from there. They uh, talk about, they are basically chilling after the bath, and they're talking about, you know, the Fairy King's Forest, the barrier, basically recapping, like, Meliodas is dead, Gloxinia, the Ten Commandments, uh, Droll, the giant, former giant, and Fairy Kings, respectively, um, part, being part of the Ten Commandments, all this jazz. They're doing a bit, it's actually not that bad, it's not like a big, like, dumping of information on the audience, it's just them reminiscing, like, Meliodas, our friend, you know, he's dead, and all that stuff, because they don't know what we know. But either way, uh, the, 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 see, the way this flows right here into one of my, one of the scenes I was kind of hyped for, like, of course, we're all hyped for fights, right? We all want to see how well they'll animate a fight. 
but there are some sequences outside of fights that I feel that I was hyped for, that I wanted to see animated. And there's a scene coming up right now that, that was like that. And, uh, and once again, guys, I might be skipping over a lot, but as I said, just finished a recording and it's gone. So, you know, I'm a little, <laughs> you know, just trying to speed things along and talk about the good stuff. So um, it's the dance sequence. Because what happens is we find out that Matrona and, and her husband and the kids and all that stuff. And everybody's there. Jahard's there. King, Deanne, everybody's there in the Fairy King's Force. are being protected. They're kind of not really sure what to do. They're just trying to stay safe from the demons for right now. Uh, this is when, you know, the, the, the fairies start dancing around and everybody's having a good time. And that's when Deanne's like, let's dance, King. And King's like, yeah, okay. And everybody starts dancing. Matrona starts dancing. Everybody starts dancing. And this is where Jahard also begins is pulled into the dance. The thing about this sequence is, well, let's just talk about the sequence. So basically what happens is we see a, we basically Gloxinia. Let's not beat around the bush. We see Gloxinia in one scene, and then there is a rather well animated part where uh, Gloxinia and Jahard end up locking, you know, fingers sort of idea, and they're holding hands, and they do a little bit of a dance spin move, and Gloxinia basically says, I knew it, I knew you were alive, that kind of thing, and Jahard kind of smiles at him, and uh, that's when, boom, over and Deanne and King are gone and nobody even realizes what they were doing up until this point. So I just want to talk about this. I want to talk about this because this was a sequence that I was really hyped for that I felt like they, they could pour a lot of time and energy and effort into and they could make this something really, really good. They could make this a, a, a scene that was like, once again, not every fight scene needs to have all the animation, right? Like, I'm not saying that, like, of course, fights is what, like, 99% of Shonen is about. But right here, this would have been a really good time to show off, like, yes, we understood a few of our mistakes from Season 2. Yes, we understand that One Punch Man Season 2 basically had mostly a lot of trash animation. So we're going to prove that we're above and beyond that. We, we have an epic very popular series that keeps gaining hype even though what's been happening in the month currently uh it keeps gaining more and more fans it's gaining popularity still to this day apparently uh from all the articles i read and all the hype for around season three you would think they would spend a little bit more time and effort now i don't think the sequence is bad it's just not great it could have been the highlight of the episode and it's not and it should have been because we do get a very, uh, like, we it's not just all still images, which is something, but a lot of it is still still images. It's still that well-drawn stills, for a change, but still a still image just zoomed out and panned across with a little bit of flowing CGI. Ah, like, come on. Give me a little more. This sequence is like a minute. Not even a minute. It's 50 seconds. Animate some shit, man. That's all I'm saying. This scene could have been, like, the music was on point, and the fairies. The fairies were actually moving and flowing and playing music and stuff, and, those, and the music was there. I was good with that. Why couldn't we just see, like, even, like, like in the 30s, Disney had clapping cats that looked better than this. You know, the Aristocats, Robin Hood. They even copied their original animation for those two Disney classics. Look it up. But those dance sequences, they redrew over those animations rather than do it. And it still looks fine in both movies, right? But, like, just show, like, all I'm asking is could they not have shown, like, a couple of close-up of the fairies, maybe just stringing a harp a little bit, one playing a flute, just a little bit more animation. I understand it would be very difficult to animate a lot uh, of, like, uh, Matrona and Deanne dancing, for example. That's okay. I can kind of get behind that. But... You could have done it. You could have made it seem like it wasn't just stills. Like, as I said, these these very undetailed fairies all looking the, like, copy-paste, copy-paste in a row, you know, with just different colors. It looked lazy, guys. I'm just saying, like, th there was so much more. Like, the CGI flower thing, I think it was CGI anyway. It looks like it. It was, uh, it might have been a combination of both. But it was very well done. It was, it was very nice. It flowed nice. But all it was doing was basically masking. It was covering up the fact that they only, they didn't animate the scene. And that is a huge disappointment. Would have been a highlight of this episode, and I could have taken this shot, thrown it up like people do of season one with Gil Thunder's lightning spear throw to Meliodas back and forth. 
I could have shown this scene for like, hey, season three is worth watching. Look at this 50 second dance sequence. I could have shown that and been like, look at this animation quality. All right, all right. So, like, they just they screwed up such a great marketing moment. It would have been a highlight moment to showcase. Especially since Glaxinia, I'm not going to say... I mean, he's definitely one of the more fan favorite of the Ten Commandments. He's definitely one of my more favorite. I really enjoy Glaxinia. I like the design of Glaxinia. I like Glaxinia as a character. You know, it's just... Uh, this was kind of a shining moment there. At the very least, as I said, they did animate Jahard and Gloxini doing a little spin dance there. But another thing they could have expanded on was in the manga, it was only a few pages. So, but they still showed Gloxini in the background a few times. They only showed him, from what I could tell, in the background once. A couple more background shots extending the scene by 20, 30 seconds. And just, you were doing still images with flowers CGI on anyways. Why not extend the sequence a little bit and draw a couple more Gloxinias in the background? Just saying. Would have been kind of cool. Whatever. Um, I really, as I said, it feels like I'm really shitting on the scene. But that's only because I had super high expectations for it. And it, it's mediocre at best. It was, it was not great. It wasn't bad. It was okay. But I was expecting some greatness from this. So... Unfortunately, I, I just felt a little disappointed, and I was like sitting on the edge of my chair going, okay, not bad, uh, 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 but nothing wild me. So um, that being said, after this point, everyone has this illusion thing uh, taken off of them, and that's something I just want to talk about really, really quick, is the level of magic that uh, Nakaba, the creator of the, if you guys don't know, the creator of the uh, Seven Deadly Sins and Anatsu no Taizai manga series, which of course is what the anime is based off of, Nakaba uh, decides to jump between what's called a uh, soft and a hard magic system at the drop of a hat. He does this throughout the series. Uh, a good way, a good rule of thumb for this is some people want to call it a hybrid series, but it doesn't follow all the rules of a hybrid magical series. Um, suffice it to say, an easy way to explain this is um, a hard magical system is something like an RPG video game with a set number of spells. You can see the whole list. You know everything. And that's all you have. You have your arsenal. That's it. These are your attacks. Done. A soft magical system is, okay, this guy has magic. There's some things he can do, some things he can't do. Sometimes it feels like, well, why isn't he doing anything? Because you don't really know like the extent. Uh, a good example of this would be Gandalf in Lord of the Rings or something like that, right? Uh, there are some things he can do, some things he can't do, and we never really... It's, it's left ambiguous so that when he does something, it doesn't feel like an ass pull, right? Um, Nakaba, for the most part, and this reflects on this anime episode as well here because of the spells that Gloxinia uses, like this one, is simply... When it's combat related, an easy rule of thumb for Seven Deadly Sins is when it's combat related, it's a hard magic system. You know the attacks, you know the power, you know what's going on. Anything else for plot convenience and situational will be soft and unexplained and just because they can. They're powerful magical beings and they can do this. So look at it that way for a good rule of thumb. It doesn't, it's just, it's on average. That's most of what Taizai utilizes it for. Um, but that being said, uh, I just want to say that because this technique is, I understand, once again, Gloxinia, first fairy king, awesome, all this stuff, but a spell where he infiltrates fairy king's force, makes everyone not even realize, like, just doing a dance, just, let's have a good time, basically making everybody drunk but not drunk, have this little dance, him insert himself in it, nobody notices him, nobody senses his huge demonic magical power, because right now he's, he's still got, he's, he's still... Ten Commandments, so it's still demonic, right? Uh, he's got demonic magical power, huge size, just dancing around, interacting with some of the fairies, and they're just like, eh, you know, whatever. And then steals away a goddamn giant and, and, and the fairy king himself without making a sound, just boop, done. Like, that is... And that's like... I don't care if he layered spells on top of that. That's some crazy high-level stuff he pulled off there. So, um, I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I think he could do it. I just, it's kind of like, damn. Like, this is the difference. Like, like this is just, whoa. So, Gloxinia can do this stuff? Yeah. 
accept it, move on. So that's what I wanted to bring up about the difference between the hard and the soft magic system because Taizai combat-wise has been very, very strictly a hard magic system. And then when it's not, it's soft. So anyways, um, that being said, we get King and Deanne here. Uh, they have stolen away into this like uh, very, and I do like this. This looks nice. It's this emerald kind of shine, like this luminous off of the rock sort of dungeon. It's it's very creepy. It's this big like towering rock formation cavern. Uh, it looks really cool. And suffice it to say, for the rest of the episode, they fight against Dolor and Gloxinia. The animation is good. Uh, I didn't really have many complaints. Uh, it was a, it was a pretty good fight. Um, Nothing different really from the manga. At least they, they showcased everything. The, the uh, Gloxinia versus King, of course, and Droll versus Deanne. I thought the animation was fine. Didn't really have much of a problem with it. Once again, we have a little bit of censorship here in the episode. Um, but uh, when King gets slashed and stuff. And here's another issue that I have, uh, but this is anime-wide, is that these two are brink of death, multiple color bruised, bl bloody to shit sort of level of beaten up and Deanne looks like she's got like she fell down and got a scratches on a couple of rocks like it, it's just like a king looks brutal king like this is the image I was talking about king actually gets slashed you know across the back we see him beaten and bloody and he's crying and stuff and he's got blood you know coming out of his mouth and stuff and it seems like that's the difference between the censorship still images they don't mind the blood when it's animated blood that's when they have an issue so I think I brought that up. See, now I don't remember. See, because I'm repeating myself. I just recorded this. So I might have said that at the beginning of the video. I might not have. But just saying it here now um, where it's relevant, that seems to be the case. They seem to have no problem as long as it's not flowing blood. As long as it's not animated blood, they haven't censored it out. So anyways, um, yeah. So pretty much they get their ass kicked. It was a decent enough fight uh, animation-wise. And they basically say, well, we're going to train you. It's like, wait, what? And I never really fully got this uh, explanation. I mean, it it kind of accounts for something, but not really. Like, basically, uh, Droll and Gloxinia basically say that after all this time, they made a decision back in the past, and uh, it has shaped how they, they used to fight against the demons. Now they're for the demons. But after clashing with Meliodas last time, uh, they've started to really question their decision, whether they're doing the right thing or not. It's cut, To me, it was always a really weak reason but, okay, um, it's, to me it just always was. Uh, maybe they'll expand on something here, I don't know. Uh, or maybe I missed something in the manga. But unless they expanded on that reason, which I don't think they did. I like Droll and Gloxinia, and, I, and I, I like their story arcs and stuff like that. But I always found this reason really weak that they were like, oh yeah, we're, we're, we're bone-chilling evil, part of the Ten Commandments, the evil demon clan thousands of years and one fight with Meliodas and they and they you know flip I, it just I don't know it, it where where they didn't really have a like a meaningful talk necessarily with Meliodas that I saw so anyways um, so yeah basically they say well we're gonna do a spell and well they don't tell them but they do another this is another one Gloxinia pulls off some crazy ass spell, which inevitably sends Deanne and King back into the past inside Gloxinia and Droll's bodies. And they're still themselves, but they seem to be far back in the past. We see a Meliodas totally fine, looking like a badass with this crazy huge sword that we saw in the teaser trailer for the season. We see Elizabeth, both eyes showing, big white goddess wings. She's a member of the goddess clan. I mean... Yeah, so this is like they they jump pretty far here. Like like it's not it's it's a good flowing thing because this I really as I said I really like this past arc thing they do here in the manga. So I can't wait to see more here in the anime, right? Uh, because I really enjoyed this this part of it. And for the most part, as I said, this episode flowed just fine. As I said, the fight was okay. Um, then they have their explanation and stuff. Uh, once again, a little bit of censorship and a little bit of still image usage, but 
for the most part, not bad. They jump into the bodies, as I said, weak reason saying, ah, we're going to train you guys because you guys are weak. You can't fight the Ten Commandments, but we're going to give you a test. If you pass, you'll definitely get stronger. They agree. Gloxinia does the spell, sends them to the bodies. They meet up with Meliodas and Elizabeth, as I said. Um, a couple of the stills with Elizabeth and Meliodas. Once again, it's like you guys are using, an, it, to me anyway, it feels there's an overuse of still images that are panned and zoomed in and zoomed out. In this, in these first two episodes, an overuse, at least noticeable to me. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm being nitpicky. But for me, guys, that's what I'm noticing. And the issue I have with that is, like, they're not even drawn all the time super well. You know? Like, I could find multiple still images of Elizabeth and Meliodas that are ten times better from every episode in the first season of Seven Deadly Sins than these some of these stills are like I'm, I'm just saying i might not be able to pull up a still once again the episode just dropped so i i only throw up screenshots i collect five or six and i just use them where i find them relevant guys so i might not actually find a good comparison maybe i'll do a comparison video at a later date but that's beside the point uh suffice to say yeah so i sometimes that just that that gets to me when i'm watching the episode it takes me into the moment i'm like couldn't have animated that. Even if you didn't animate it, you couldn't have drawn it better. Like a huge landscape-wide shot of Elizabeth, that's fine. Or or Meliodas, or, or like the burning buildings, or anything, that's fine. But just draw it nice. Like draw it, put some effort into it. Put you know, put that extra thirty minutes of work into it. That's all I'm saying. Um, so after this, they decide like uh, they tried to talk to Meliodas, of course, and they don't understand anything that's going on. Meliodas doesn't know who they are. They're like, oh, you're Gloxinia, you're Droll, you know that kind of stuff, right? Um, and we see uh, Elizabeth's like, yeah, okay, we're gonna go, and then they all go, and they're like, whoa, okay, where are we going? And they're running and running, and they're just following them. Uh, King basically figures out that they are in uh, Droll and Gloxinia's bodies, respectively, and this could be like. This is before that they remember Ten Commandments. So this was thousands of years ago, right? This is during the time of the Holy War. And that's when uh, they come across this. Now, this is well animated. The purple and the black and the reds used here. This is nice. Why couldn't you get this, like, like once again, the green of that cave thing was cool. And uh, this, this color pa palette or pattern they used for uh, this sequence is really nice. Like, the burning buildings. The fire, the damages, the purplish of the Hellblaze, the black, you know, coated with purple Hellblaze, used where the demons and the Albions and all, you know, the Ash Demons, the Grey Demons, Red Demons, they're all just attacking this town or village or castle. Can't even tell anymore because it's all on fire and they're just burning it to shit. They're eating people, they're stomping on people, you see blood and it's just like, damn, like this is, this is pretty hardcore. Joel and, or I should say, King and Deanne are looking on and Joel and Gloxinia's bodies respectively and they're just like, this is this is horrible, this is devastating, what, what can we do? And Meliodas just jumps into the fray and he is wrecking shit, he looks awesome. This was well animated, this was really cool, this whole last sequence was really cool, this is where they put some effort in and uh, I really enjoyed this. Um, once again, they didn't show the splattering blood but uh, it is what it is um, and that's when Joel and Gloxinia are like, what? Well, or King and Deanne are uh, standing there like, damn, look at Meliodas go. Like, we feel like baggage. We're, we're such a burden. And that's when Calmadios, boom, he jumps into the fray. Now, Calmadios is, doesn't look the best right here, so I hope they give him a little more, like, better quality drawing uh, or animation here uh, in the next episode. But he shows up, and uh, I believe they call him of faith in the subtitles here. That could be a problem with the thing, because he's actually of piety. He was mistranslated to be part of the betrayal, but he certainly doesn't have Melisuklo's uh, uh, Ten Commandment of faith. So, subbed here, it's Calmadios of faith. That is incorrect. He is a member of Ten Commandments. That part is correct. But he actually had Zeldris is uh, commandment at this time. He had piety. So, yeah, weird, but uh, maybe it's a sub-problem. It might not actually be in the Japanese. I don't speak Japanese, so I couldn't listen to it and be like, ah, oh, well, that word can mean multiple things and multiple synonyms. Nope, have no clue. So we'll have to see if that's retconned or fixed later or if it was just a su uh, fan sub-issue. I have no idea. Um, but that being said, that's where the uh, episode ends. 
Uh, once again, I thought this episode was way better than the first one. It sounds like I did a lot of complaining, but that's only because, once again, uh, one of the hype things that I was waiting for outside of fight scenes was kind of mediocre, right? Uh, and once again, guys, not the hugest fan of the King Deanne dynamic and following them so much. But now that we're into the uh, Holy War stuff and we'll have multiple characters to follow, um, I'm going to enjoy this a lot more. And once again, I like the Gloxinia parts like Dolan. I thought this episode was done very well. I thought it was done uh, way better than the first one with the filler stuff. This, as I, can, I believe I said, once again, re-recording, don't know. This is the first, this is the true beginning of season three. And I think it was pretty good. I think it was pretty good. I, I, I would give it an, an average score, above average score. It wasn't a great episode, but it was a good episode. Um, still some, I'm still noticing some animation issues, you know, or, or um, quality issues, I should say, more than animation. But um, you get rid of some of that censorship, and you show some better quality stuff in the future. And I think the season will uh, surprise us all. So that being said, guys, before OBS dies on me again, uh, please don't, please don't, please don't do that. Uh, <laughs> second recording of episode two review for Seven Deadly Sins, Wrath of the Gods, season three. Like, comment, subscribe as always, guys. It's always really appreciated. Hit that bell notification every time if you want to know whenever I drop a video, regardless whether it's a review, a theory, a let's play, whatever it is. Uh, that being said, guys, well, I know we're not behind the bar, but who gives a shit? Drink responsibly, as always. We'll see you back here for Season 3, Episode 3. Can't wait, guys. See you next time.